must be, oh, okay, so we're just being asked to find the slope here, right? Okay, so remember, if you have a single variable equation, you have a blank or blank line, fill in the blanks, remember? If you have only one variable in the equation, right? This isn't an ordered pair. This isn't saying 2 fifteenths comma 0. That's a point. Because you have an equal sign there, you have an equation. You have an equation, you have a line. OK? And if you only have one variable, it's a blank or blank line. Fill in the blanks. Horizontal or vertical. Horizontal or vertical. OK. So if you're a horizontal line, what's your slope? Zero. Zero, right? We put the pen on it, it doesn't roll anywhere. If you're a vertical line, your slope is what? Undefined. It's undefined. You have to memorize that. <coughs> now, why is this undefined? Well, this is kind of fascinating, OK? If slope is measured by rise over run, and let's say from here to here, is 100 feet, right? Catch my drift here, okay? So what's my rise? What am I going up and down? What's my up down? Zero. Oh, it's zero, yeah. And what's my run? 100. It's 100. And zero divided by any number equals zero. zero. Zero, and that is the same. Now we come over here, and if I have this vertical line, and I take from here to here, is 100 feet, so my rise is what? 100. It's 100, but what's my run? Zero. And division by zero is? Undefined. Undefined. Okay, now that single variable right there is you know two fifteenths. Well, if you were to, you know, and, and I'm gonna do a graph like this because, you know, two fifteenths is gonna be about right there, right, somewhere in that in that zone right there. Now it's either horizontal. Well, if it's horizontal, it would be x equals zero because it would be on this, but it's a vertical line, and so we can see yeah that's undefined. Cool. That's why it's undefined. Does that help? Make sense? Okay, and when you uh, think about this, um, how many people have ever gone cliff jumping or bridge jumping or something like that? Any, anybody ever jump? Just jump in the air? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Who's had a cool cliff jumping or bridge jumping experience? Yeah, what'd you do? Um, I jumped off a train bridge in my hometown. Oh, fun. Yeah. That's cool, was it big? It was, yeah. yeah. It was like, I don't know in feet, but it was it was off the rails. High. <laughs> Did you hear that pun? Yeah, it was how, how high? Uh, I think it was about like 20 to 50 meters, somewhere in there. Wow, wow. That's big. Did it hurt when you landed? No, because the water was very deep. Mm -hmm. And I have swift dog, oh, except jumped before, so I knew how cool. to jump off the bridge. There you go, there yeah. you go. Did it leave your arm out so it slapped when you hit? No. Nope. Yeah. That's cool. Who else is? You see what? Of a train bridge, yeah? There's a big, uh, Thank you. It's a big river. Rocks? Is it a bunch of rocks? Yeah, it's a big cliff. Oh, cool. That's cool, man. Yeah? Um, there's this place in the back of valley called Vineyard Lake. Okay. Oh, that's cool. And it's in the Magic Valley? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out sometime. Well, it's not on Google. It's like, if you live in the Magic Valley, you know where it is. Yeah. You're not going to find it on Google Maps. It's kind of like Durkee's Lake and Shoshone Falls. Has yeah. anybody ever been to Durkee's? You've been there? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. There, but Where's the... Vineyard Lake is better. There's more cliffs. Durkee's is... Um, Durkee's is an interesting It is. It's very interesting. Because it's just straight deep. Is it Durkee's? You know? Like there's yeah. no... It's just that circle almost. And there's like a crater. And there's like... There's you know, some other... There's like... If you go down a trail, there's another place called Vineyard Lake. Uh-huh. That's cool. I remember the first time I went on Durkee's, it was, uh, I just was astonished at the fact that, you know, there was no edge, you know, it's not like the, the lake, you know, went in like this, it just went straight down. And, and then my buddies would tell me that they'd taken ropes and stuff and dropped them down and never found the bottom, like, you know, they never measured the bottom of that lake. It's so deep, you know, so, yeah. yeah. But it's really, it, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of movement with that water, so it's really hard, a lot of mineral in it. You know, so you jump, you know, 40, 50 feet and you hit that and it hurts just because it just slaps you no matter how you hit it. Yeah. 
the the um so the hike where we had the map where you on, on the ice no no about the waterfall and the guy there's there's this this big beach waterfall to jump off that and my friend um he jumped the kester oh. and he had a trombone finish <laughs> what yeah. are you making this up no. he died he died yeah. he was your friend yeah. and were you there yeah. oh that's awful and how old were you he didn't he didn't, he didn't get back back to the kester for like for hours and we had to find him we had the people come and find him yeah, is this like your ex wife's story no, no, no. <laughs> Whoa, that's it's sad. Pretty it's pretty sad. It's like three years ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. oh, man. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to say that. So. Yeah. That's crazy. It was funny. <laughs> no, because we told him not to do it. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> yeah, over at, you know, Durkee's even, there's a there's a rock and they paint suicide on there, you know? And it's, it's the tallest point. And my friend jumped off that day and he came up coughing up blood. You know? I never could do that. Yeah. He, he kind of hit on his side just a little bit and broke his ribs. Yeah. Uh, there's this place my family and I just go camping in Hawaii, and it's like super like there's not a lot of like space. You have to like stay straight or else you like hit rocks and stuff. And there's like different levels, and the top level is called the local level because uh -huh. all the locals jump off of it. And my cousin, he got into BYU Hawaii, and they're like, okay, you have to jump off the local level, and it's like 70 feet, and he jumped off. Of Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's on Oahu. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. There's. Yeah, I'm trying to think. There's, there's, Maui's kind of like my second home, <laughs> and anything on Maui, I know where it's at. But mm -hmm. I, my daughter's going to BYU Hawaii. Um, wow, but uh, if I if I get a second later, I'll pull up a picture <laughs> of my boy Jacob, and he's jumping off a 70 foot cliff in Hawaii. He's doing a gainer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's into the ocean though it's oh, it's really gosh. cool but the ocean has created this little bay and 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 we're all in there and saw our friends and we just hang out there and it's super fun and, and all the locals think my son is like a god you know because they all they all do crazy stuff and he's just one of them you know and he they, he always whenever he comes he's like oh jacob you know because he's just does all this crazy oh, stuff you know where it's at like the history it's near hana yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, cool stuff. Well, I ask you is that you know when you've if you've ever jumped off of a cliff, um, you know I have uh, I have skied off of cliffs. Um, I've skied off of some really big cliffs, and uh, and and landed it and, and lived to tell the tale, um, and definitely jumped in water and stuff like that. But when you go off that cliff, it's kind of like an undefined moment, right? So if you if you forget. What, that a vertical line is undefined. You think about, you know, this is straight up and down. You jump off of it, you know, I mean, if you're really, 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 really steep, even if you're just really, 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 really steep, you know, when you jump, you're going to hit it and bounce and bounce and bounce, right? But if you got a straight line and you jump off that, woo, there's this point at which you jump off it and your heart's kind of like up in your Adam's apple. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, kind of an undefined feeling, undefined moment, right? So that can maybe help you remember that. All right, guys. Um, if there are no other questions over the homework, I'm happy to do. Could we do 43 over All there? All right, read it. So it's in the left hand corner. Oh, it's in the left hand corner? Oh, I didn't see it. My bad, my bad. Okay, and so we're being asked to find the slope uh -huh. of this? Okay. And so when we're given the equation of a line, we want to put it in y equals mx plus b form. So we have x plus 5y equals 10. We're going to subtract x from each side, right? Cancel. We get 5y equals, we're going to put negative x plus 10. Okay? Negative x plus 10. Now, why did I put the x first? Because we want to be in y equals mx plus b form. Agreed? Divide this by 5. Now, we're going to divide the whole side by 5 or each individual term? Each, each term. Okay, so y now equals, and we've got to think about this, what number is on the top of this fraction? Negative one. one. It's negative one. Negative one fifth x plus two in essence. Okay? And so your slope is negative one fifth. Okay? Yeah. Um, okay, so you talked about this on Friday, it was, and you talked about question number twenty nine. You said yeah. that, that is the one that gets asked the most often. Yeah, we can go so, over again if you need to. Yeah, could we? Because yeah, I think I got lost. 
So there was a couple of problems where they used the expression rate of change. And this problem was about population growth in Alaska of some kind, correct? Mm -hmm. And you have two dots there, and I'm going to need you to help me, but this one was like 1990 was the year, and 550,000 was the population? I think this is a different one. This is 35. Okay, give me that one then. Uh, 35, or, oh, 29. Oh, you're talking about the one with the Yeah, it's always good to pull it up in the book. Let's just do it real quick. You're talking about the one I don't remember what it is. Copier machine. Peak in Colorado rises to summit elevation. Oh, all right. Yeah, this one. This one's annoying to some people. Okay, so look at this. So we have this peak. It's Long's Peak. Okay, Long's Peak in Colorado. Go ahead and rise to an elevation of what? Fourteen two five five. Okay. And then fifth. Oh, we'll read the problem. Okay. Uh, rises to the summit elevation of 14,255 feet over a horizontal distance of 15,840 feet. Find the grade of Long's Peak. Okay, you got to start from the beginning though, because okay. we're missing a key bit of information. From Go a ahead. base elevation of 9,600 feet. Okay. Long Peaks. Okay, Long so here's the deal. Speaking of Hawaii, so in Hawaii, the mountains rise up from the edge of the ocean and mm -hmm. climb right up, you know, to the top of the sky. But for the rest of us in the world, okay, like here in Idaho, any mountain we have here doesn't start at sea level. And sea level is what in terms of elevation? Zero, yeah. zero feet. And so this mountain starts at an elevation of 9,600 feet. Most of the mountains here start at an elevation of four to 5,000 feet here in Idaho. We're almost a mile high already in most of our instances when we, when we begin ascending a mountain. And so we go back to, what are our three tools to find slope? Okay, I want, I want you guys to name the three tools to find slope. Y equals mx plus b. Okay, I like that one. So we got y equals mx plus b. That's one of them, right? Okay, rise over run equals M. I like that too. And then Y2 plus Y2 minus Y1. Yep, you guys are awesome. Okay, good. And you got to have those memorized. Now, next thing I want you to do, okay? Okay, when used, right? So when do we use these? It's based on what you're given. So when do you use this? When you're given what? An ordered pair, two ordered pairs. Two ordered pairs, which we call two points. Okay, a point is an ordered pair. Points are faster or abbreviated way of saying an ordered pair, right? When do we use this? And that's what we just did over there. We were given the equation of a line, okay? And when do we use this? When there's no equation or no two points. Right, when you're given neither of the above, right? Neither of the above. <coughs> so what are we given here? Yeah. Neither, yeah. There's no, there's no two ordered pairs here, and there's no um, equation of a line, and so we are concerned with rise over run. Now, the run is 15,840 feet. That's pretty indisputable. But the rise is not 14,255 because we didn't start at sea level down here at zero. We started all the way here at this elevation in Colorado of 9,600 feet, and so we have to do what with those two numbers? Subtract 14,255 five minus 9,600. What does that give us? 4,655. 4,655. Five. I like it. Okay. And so now we have 4,655. Now we can divide those two. Okay. Get a decimal, convert it to a percent, and we've got the grade. Cool? Yep. Okay. Great question. You don't have one that complicated on the test. Yeah. So the answer is 29.4%. At first, that's just the 29%. I just rounded. Why would that be wrong? Like how should we say that again? So the answer was 29.4%. Yeah. I just put 29% though because I didn't include the 
Like how do you know when to well, the nice thing about RSS, right, is that they're not filling the blank. Yeah. They're multiple choice. So they're not going to have like one answer to the ones place and another answer to the tenths place. They're all going to be to the same place. So you'll, you'll just by default know to round that place. For future reference, is there a better version of A better way of doing it? Yeah. I think typically we round to the tenths place. You know, it's kind of like, you know, 14.5%, you know, a half a percent, the first decimal place of percent makes a difference in something like grade. So, yeah, but yeah, you're good. Okay, all right guys, open up your notes to your basics. We're gonna complete our knowledge on basics. Now, all my classes got out early today. Oh. Yours could too, but that really depends on how well you're understanding things. And so I want you to really anxiously engage in a good cause here, and, and let's, just, let's just get this going on here. Okay, uh, forms of the equation of a line. Forms of the equation of a line. Standard. Versus um, slope intercept. Um, okay, ax plus by equals negative c. This is y equals mx plus b. An example would be 2x plus 3y equals negative 6, or 3x minus y equals 4, and on and on. It would give lots of examples. So this is like example 1, this is like example 2. Let's convert 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. Let's convert that to y equals mx plus b. You guys tell me what to do to make this a y equals mx plus b statement. What do I do first? Subtract 2x. Subtract 2x, both sides. Very good. 3y equals negative 6 or negative 2x first? Negative 2x. Negative 2x minus 6. Now what? Divide by 3. Whole side or each piece? Each piece. Each term, yep. Y equals negative two-thirds x. Negative six over three makes negative two. So this one right here, it's y equals mx plus b. Counterpart is y equals negative two-thirds x minus two. So I have a quick question for you. Okay, I know you got your heads down, but I want you to lift your eyes up for a second. This equation right here, this equation right here, two x plus three y equals negative six, and that equation right there, y equals negative two-thirds x minus two, are they the same? Uh -huh. Sometimes you look at my facial expressions to determine the answer. Yes. <laughs> Zeke within yourselves. They are the same. Math is the manipulation of numbers to look the same. same. But remain the same. Okay? Do those two look different? Yes. Well, we started with this, we used the balance rule, we ended with this. They're the same fetching equation. But one is in what we call standard form, and this is what we call slope intercept form. Why is this called slope intercept form? Well, it's pretty commonsensical. What's M? Slope. 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 What's B? Intercept. The y-intercept. The y-intercept. Hence the name <laughs> slope, intercept, form of a line. When you convert this from standard form to this form, it reveals a lot of really great information. You immediately know the slope of your line. You know the y-intercept. We're going to use this to wrap up our graphing knowledge here in just a minute. Okay? Let's take 3x minus y equals 4. Let's take 3x minus y equals 4, and put it in y equals m equals b4. Tell me what to do. Subtract 3x. Subtract 3x. Balance rule, do it to both sides. So we're going to end up with negative y equals, what do I write here? 
3x plus 4. Now what? Divide by negative 1. Okay, so we're going to divide this by negative 1, the whole side or each individual part? Each individual part. Each part, okay. And we get y equals what? 3x. 3x? Minus 4. Minus 4. Okay, good. And so this is y equals 3x minus 4. Exact same concept here. Same, same equation looks different, okay? Standard form, y equals mx plus b form. What's the slope of this line? What's the slope of this line? No, 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 no. mx plus b. Look at m. What's the slope? 3. 3. And some of you are saying 3 over 1. And if we need rise over run, then we need to know it's 3 over 1. We can just say 3, but if we're using rise over run, we, it is 3 over 1. And what's the y-intercept? Negative 4. Negative 4. Very good. Okay. So one thing that confuses students sometimes, look up here, please. And I'm going to explain this over on this side note here. Look up here. I don't want you to be looking down. The truth of the matter is, is when we write things in math, this is the true standard form of most equations, is everything's on one side, all the terms are on one side, set equal to zero. It's called standard form, okay? But the standard form of the equation of a line, we bring the C over to the other side by subtracting it, and so we get AX plus by equals negative c. And I get students sometimes like, well, that's not in standard form because it's not negative. And they're like, because that, that's telling me it's negative. It doesn't, this could be negative or positive depending on what was happening over on this side. It's just that what we're doing here is these are your x and y terms, and this is always your, nu your numerical term. And if the numerical term was over here, to get it over there, you'd have to subtract from each side. Does that make sense? That's why it says negative C. It isn't that the term has to be negative. It's that C is moving to that other side. Okay? All right, that completes your basics. Okay, we're done after that. So finish writing that down. And then join me over to the far left board in your graphing notes. We're going to finish our last method of graphing. This is, uh, well, it's section two point, or sorry, three point, chapter three. It's section 3.5, which is kind of weird because you're like, well, what, what's going on with 3.4? And the book's just stupid, and they really should teach this first, but uh, they kind of mix things up. So we're going to go 3.5, and then we'll go back to 3.4. Graphing method 3, y equals mx plus b. Step number one. Put equation in y equals mx plus b form. Step number two, uh, plot b, your first point. How many points do you need to graph a line? Two. two. Okay, so we got one point already. Use m to rise, then run from b. This will give you your second point. And step number four, connect the dots. <clears throat> so, this is going to complete your knowledge of... Um, It's going to complete your knowledge of graphing. Let's go ahead and drop our pens and pencils for just a minute, please. Uh, like I said, if we can stay on pace today and understanding what we're doing, we can get out early possibly. But first thing I want to do is, is this. So have we ever graphed this equation? This equation right here? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of times. Okay. So we know what this looks like. Okay, first thing, we have to put this in y equals mx plus b form. We just did it on that board. Let's do it again. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x. You guys agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. 
And why well, not write it up there just so you can see it, okay? And then we get 3y equals negative 2x minus 6. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2. That's what we got when we convert this to this. We see that, okay? So that's step number one. So this is step number one right here. We're putting it in y equals mx plus b form, okay? Step number two is b equals negative 2. So we're going to graph that. We're going to put that over here on the graph. Now, B is always on the y-axis. Don't ever put it on the x-axis. It is the y-intercept. How many points do you have right now? One. One. How many do you need? Two. Two. Okay. So step number three is you're going to use slope, which is rise over run, which equals negative two over three, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to, you're going to move from the origin or from this point? From the origin. No, from that point. From this point. Okay, interesting. So on the first day of this chapter, which was last Monday, one week ago, I said, I asked you, I said, what is this point right here called? Origin. And you said origin. And I said, it's because every, all of our movement originates there with one exception. I said, we'll talk about that later. Well, later has arrived. Okay. This is the one moment when you move from the existing point you have not from the origin. And so you're going to take this and you're going to rise to, which means you're going to go up or down here? Down. down because it's negative. Negative, right? Rise does mean to go up in the English language, but if this is negative, you're going to go down to and over three. Over three. Very good. Okay, so you're right there. And, okay, there's your line. And we've graphed this, and we've seen this before. We know this is what this line looks like. Now, I got a question for you. Pay attention. We've talked about this before. Is negative 2 over 3 equal to 2 over negative 3? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's think about this, okay? Oh, yeah. When I have a negative in front of a fraction, that means that value of that fraction is positive or negative? Negative. Obviously. What's a negative over a positive? A negative fraction. What's a positive over a negative? negative? A negative fraction. So all three of these are the same. But what they aren't, look up here, they are never negative 2 over negative 3. People say, well, that's a negative fraction. Aren't they both negative? What's a negative over a negative? Positive. Yeah, that would make positive 2 thirds. That's not an option. So listen to this. Look at this. This is fascinating. If this, this is the same as this, can't we go up 2 and back 3? Yes. Do that. Up to, back to, oh, fetch me. I'm on my line. <laughs> because they are the same. same fraction. Okay? And the slope is the same. We cool? Okay. All right. I want to show you one other thing kind of interesting here. In fact, I'm going to do it on this board over here. I pick a dot on this line. And we, when, we went our, when we went on our field trip, we were messing around with stairs over there, stuff like that. Okay, so if I go up one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so about five equal places up. I just pick randomly, I pick five. Okay, look up here. And I make that my, my point here. And I make the same spaces going this way. Let's see how many of these equal size spaces it takes to get to our line. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So we went up 5, rise, run 15. Can I reduce that? Yes. To what? One third. One third. Okay, what I want to show you, it's kind of fascinating is, listen to this, is the slope of this line is one third. Okay? Masumenos, right? More or less. Because we're doing the little hash mark method here, right? So if I go up one and over, ready for this? One, two, three, oh, I'm on my line again. Because one third and five fifteenths are the same, right? But why I'm showing you this is that we never, we never say, oh, here's my first dot, here's my next dot, I want to find another dot on this line. Let me start in the rafters. That's starting from the origin. 
You get what I'm saying? I, I, I want you to understand, when you use rise over run to find your next point, you have to start on the line, not at the origin. Now, can we go up 5 and 15 and, and be on the line? Yeah, we could have done it here, too. We could have gone, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, you know? Because they're the same fetching, you know, 5 over 15 and 1 third are the same. It's kind of cool. It's just kind of cool when you do stuff like that, okay? All right, finish taking notes. Basics, graphing, and then... I'm going to put you into some groups, okay? Groups rhymes with <laughs> what? Hoops. Yeah. 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 I still have a junior high school sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> How many people we got in here today? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's a, a weird number for groups. Let's go and do one big number of 17. What's that? Let's do one big number. You want one big group of 17? Yeah. I like that idea. Sure. No. You come up here and the four of you come together, please. Okay? Get together. Okay? Listen, what I want you to do is as soon as you're done taking notes, get into your groups. Okay? Remind each other of your names. Okay? Play the little game. My name <laughs> is Donald freaking Duck. <laughs> Okay? And I'm a quack. All right. Bad joke. That's all right. Dad jokes. Okay? All right. You. Yeah. Man, that was off the bill. Dude, you're as bad as me, bro. Austin. I tell you what. Oh, my gosh. This is so hard. Okay. You three come together. Adrian, will you jump in and join them? Sure. Thanks, man. Okay. How about, um, how about you three come on in? You four, right there, right? Adrian's gonna jump over with these guys. Okay, cool. All right, we good? Mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, you two, you two. Dude, it's a good thing you're a married man because you are sandwiched by women, okay? It's the, it's the, yeah. Can you five come together? Yeah. yeah, okay. Go ahead, move your desk, come together, face each other. I'm gonna be writing some problems on the board. While I'm writing them, I want you guys to remind each other of your names. Uh, look at each other without masks for the first time all semester. Yeah. Okay. Find. The two assignments combined will take you about 30 minutes. If you spend a ton of extra time on it, maybe 45, but this is about a 30 minute deal. Uh, in section 3.5, we're doing 1 through 29 odd. That's 15 problems. We're going to do three of them, so you're only going to have 12 left to do. There's number one. Really easy. Go ahead and do it. See if you can figure this out. It's, it's so easy. You might... What? Yeah, you're good. It's so easy that we'll wrap our hands. Okay. And, and hey, you're graphing this using what method? Y equals mx plus b on these other ones, right? 17 and want you to do is do these and then compare with each other and see if your graphs are all looking the same, all right? Graph these using y equals mx plus b. Can I erase the far left board? Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, better yet, the middle board, the middle board. Okay, go ahead and take any pictures you want if you want to. I'm going to erase the middle board. I'll leave the far left. Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? Yeah. Okay. All right, this first one. Listen, 
Was this easy? Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, they give you the y intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5. Okay. Is it, look up here, is it here? Is it here? No. No, no that's the no. x axis. Make sure you never make that mistake. That's the most common mistake because people don't put it on the y axis. And from here, we go up or down? Up. Up. Three. Two, uh, up two. And over, over three. three, right? And you got to understand again, rise over run. Okay? Two equals two over three. So we have up two over three. And we just connect these dots, right? Okay, looks something like that. Wait, so you're not going from the point up to like one, two from the point. You're going point two. Like. I don't understand what you're saying, but here's the deal. My first point is here. Yeah. My rise is two. I go up one, two from there. Oh, okay. Two spots. Okay. And over one, two, three spots from there. All right, that's what I was asking. So you were saying you're at point three. Yeah. Your marker three. Exactly. You don't go up three. I'm saying, I, I don't know what the markers are. I'm just going up this many places and over that many places. Okay. Yeah, okay? That, that's what I did. So I didn't know if you said it differently and then I got it wrong. Because well, then good. I told them wrong. You did good. Okay. Can I tell you guys something interesting? I, I hope this doesn't confuse you, but I just like stuff like this. Okay. Is two thirds the same as negative two over negative three? Yes. yes. Yeah, because a negative and a negative is a positive. positive. Okay. Let's prove it. Down two over one, two, oh, fetch me. I'm on my line. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It proves they're the same. Okay, listen, you get a problem like this and you're just like, dude, life is good, okay? Step number one in this process is to put the equation y equals mx plus b form. This equation already is, is in y equals mx plus b form. So again, you really should be dang close to being done with these because there really wasn't any work to do on these first two except just put it on the graph. What's B? Three. 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 So we're going to go one, two, three, right there. Agreed? Yes. And what's M? Three over five. So we got to rise one, two, three, and run one, two, three, four. Uh, we're way out here. So we're like, yeah, what? Did my voice change? I don't know. Anyways, okay. Does your graph look like that ish? I did it like reverse. You did it reverse? Yeah, so I just went. Was well, your line going the right direction or no? No, so I was going. The Rise over run. You got to go up three and over five. Yeah. You could go down three and back five. But. So. You gotta do this. Yeah. Do you see what you did? Yeah. Okay, I, so cool. I just flipped that. I used the rise for the run. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This one. Again, pretty easy because there's no number next to y, right? The only thing you gotta do to get in y equals mx plus v form is what? Subtract 2x. Subtract 2x from each side. It's cancels, and you get y equals negative 2x plus 1. What is this uh, what is the y-intercept? One. One. What's your slope? Negative two over one. Negative two over one. And I purposely did this so you had to deal with the fact that negative two is your slope, but if you're going to have a rise and a run, it's got to be over one. And you know, one thing you can do to help always get this right is to say, hey, rise, run. Just write that right next to it. And that way, when you draw this, okay, and your slope is one, so it's, I mean, your y intercept is one, right? And so we're going to go down two and over one. Agreed? Yes. Down two over one, and that would be our line. Say woo if you got it right. Woo. 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 All right. So what's the last page of notes we have to get? We have to cover. Okay. Look up here, please. That's everything you need in terms of a process. Write that down in those notes right now. And I'm going to put three problems on the board that help us find the equations of lines, okay? But this is your process. Now, everything in that box has to be memorized. But I'm gonna show you here in a second that if we were to really condense this process, it's find M and find B. 
Find M and find B. That's what we got to do to find the equation of a line. And then plug them into Y equals MX plus B. So I'm going to show you this. So this particular section, 3.4, you have about eh, 16 or 17 problems. We're going to do three of them. I'll write down which ones we do so you don't have to, so you can just put them into your, your work. This is number 13. Slope equals negative 7. Did I say 13? Yeah. Slope equals negative 7. And y-intercept equals 0, comma, negative 13. Okay. All right, I want to do this one with you, and then I'm going to give these other two to do. All eyes up here. Please, look up here. Okay, this is so... Where'd you go, Kyle? Your group needs you, man. We banished him. Okay, <laughs> listen. What's the first step in finding the equation of a line? Find the M. Find the slope. What's the M here? Uh, you don't have to find it. They gave it to you. You know? It's what you need. Okay? <laughs> Next thing, it says plug x, y, and m into y equals mx plus b so you can solve for b. In other words, find b. Well, what's b? B is negative 13. And they gave that to you. So they're really doing steps one through three. All that's left to do here is take y equals mx plus b, which is the skeletal form of this slope-intercept equation of a line. y is part of the equation. What's m? Negative 7. Negative 7. x is part of the equation. What's b? Okay, that is the answer. Okay, that's what you got to do. And that's problem number 13. So I'm going to put two more on the board, and you're going to do them, okay? Can I erase this over here? Mm -hmm. Far right board. You want a picture of it? You got to get it now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 oh, fetch. Okay. All right, cool. I want you to find the equation of the line with slope, with given slope, and passing through the point given. Okay, so here we go. M equals, and M equals, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's do this one. Yeah, M equals one. M equals one. And the point is going to be uh, two negative six. Okay, two comma negative six. Uh, and this is problem number 21. Okay, can you hey stop for just a second? Listen. What are we what are we trying to what are we looking for right now? What are we trying to find right now? Equation of a line. Right? Says, man, find equation. Listen to me, please listen. Are they telling you in this problem to find the slope? No. No. To find the graph? No. To find the intercepts? No. no. To find you find the equation. Okay? You gotta understand, those are the only four questions that come up on this test. Find the graph, find the slope, find the equation, find the intercepts. If you know the intercept method of graphing, you know how to find intercepts. If you know y equals mx plus b or plug and chug or any of those methods, you know how to find graph, you know how to graph. There are three tools to finding slope. You identify them today, y2 minus y1 or x2 minus x1, y equals mx plus b, rise over run. And now these four steps, you've got to memorize them, are the steps to find the equation of a line. And that's the test. Okay? All right. I'll give you another one. Keep going. Do that problem right there. I'll give you one more. Tell you a couple things about this week and next week. And we are out of here. We're not going to get out early. That's okay. Because you guys are going to be smarter than your other students. <laughs>
Okay, guys, in interest of time, uh, there's only a couple minutes of class left. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you with both these. So I'd love, I'm sorry, I, I love hearing you guys in groups, but I, we've run out of time. Okay, look up here, please. So if we want to find the equation of this line, step number one is what? Find M. And in this problem, they give it to you. So look up here. In this problem, they did steps one through three for you. In this problem, they do step one for you. And in this problem, they don't do any steps for you. You got to do all four. So in this one right here, you take y equals mx plus b. And where there's a y, you're going to plug in the y value. What's the y value? Negative 6. That's right. That's an x, that's a y, and that's m. Now what I see students do sometimes is they accidentally put 2 there. And they do it mainly because 2 came first and they just are not paying attention. 1 times 2 plus b. Now we can solve for b. That's our next step. We get negative 6 equals 2 plus b. We subtract 2 from each side, and we get negative 8 equals b. And then y equals mx plus b. We have now, if we think about this, we have found m, and we have found b, and we plug them into this, and we get y equals, what's m? 1. And 1 times x is? x. x and b is? Minus eight. minus 8. And that is the equation of that line. Look at this. First step is to find m. What's our tool for finding m here we got to use? Um, y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1 two. over x2 minus x1. That's right. We got to label these two. Look up here. x, y, x, y, 1, 1, 2, 2. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. We can take our finger, go back and forth. We end up with 2 minus 4 equals uh, 4 minus 0, which it makes negative 2 over 4, which equals negative 1 half. That's our slope. Cool? Say woo if you got that. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, we need to take that M that we just found. This equals M, so we got a winner right there. And then we have to take one of these X's and Y's and plug it into Y equals MX plus B. And I get students are like, oh, Brother Rich, what X and Y do I put in? It doesn't matter. They're all points on the same line. Pick one of them, and you'll be good to go. I always like to get the one with zero, because zero is easier math. I've told you before, anytime you can plug zero in, it's easier math. So what's Y? Four. It's going to be four in this instance. What's M? Negative, Negative one half. Negative one half. What's X? X zero. It's zero plus B. Now, our goal is to solve for B. Zero times a half makes zero, meaning four equals B. We now have M and we have b. We take y equals mx plus b. y equals, what's m? Negative one, half. Negative one half x. x is part of the equation. What's b? Plus four. Plus four. Plus four. That is the equation of this line. Now, you students sometimes, they say, well, what if I used four and two? Real quick, watch this. What if you did use four and two? y equals mx plus b. What was y in this instance? Two. two. What's m? Negative What's x? Four. Okay. Does four cross cancel with two? Yes. yes. It makes two. So I get two equals negative one times two is negative two plus b. I add two to each side, and four equals b. Same exact thing. It doesn't matter which point you use. You'll get b if you do your math correct. Okay? Okay, please listen to Coach Rich, Bro Rich. Here we go. Okay? So... If you want to, uh, yeah, you can leave it on here, Day. It might not per pertain to future classes, so, but here's the deal. We are now done with this chapter. There are more sections in chapter three. We do not cover them, so don't worry about that. That's intermediate algebra material. We're done with chapter three, okay? Sections, every section, everything assigned for the rest of chapter three is now published in Canvas, as you may have already noticed. 3, 4, and 3, 5 will be due on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we will review for the test. 
The visual charts and the review in blue are published, but they're not due until Friday. If you want to get ahead, highly recommend it. No class Friday. Okay? We're not having class Friday. Let's do this. It's a catch-up day. It's a it catch-your-breath day. It's a, you know, whatever. Get ahead. We're doing really well this semester. We're on a good pace. You've earned a day off. Enjoy the day off. But Wednesday, the test opens for Chapter 3. It opens at 9 a.m. If you take it and get an A, you still have to come to class Wednesday. Wednesday's not an optional day, and I'll tell you why. We're going to take a quiz. We're going we're gonna to review this for this test, and I would recommend that you get the review before you take the test unless you're super confident. Test will be open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Retakes go through, like, next Thursday. Next Monday, you don't have class in here. You have to watch a video to do the beginning of Chapter 4. I'm going to be in New York. So I'm going to be out of town, and you guys, so Friday, no class, but Monday, I'm out of town, okay? So we're, gonna, we're meeting on this Wednesday and reviewing, and then we won't meet again until the following Wednesday, okay? You guys cool? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, that's it. Good luck. I'm going to change that.